All right, I'm pretty late with this, but hey, it's uh, better now than ever. We're on like part seven, the final part, hopefully, where we'll be covering ReZero cut content from the web novel. We left off last time learning about, you know, uh, T-Phone's remains, like who could have been drowned and stuff like that, right? Uh, and I think we're starting from here. So let's go. This is season two, episode 16. I'm going to try to wrap it up. There's a little bit left. Consequences of the non-existence of the pyroxene crystal in the web novel. Not really important. As the pyroxene crystal does not exist in the web novel, Garfield and Frederica's mother does not pass down a pyroxene with them. It's, it's like their necklace stuff. Got it. Here we go. Betrugius was deemed unqualified to possess the witch factor by the witch factor itself. Not really important. So what do we know about the sloth witch factor? It was in the box that Flugel apparently gave to Betrugius. And Betrigu said that he's not really worthy of this. And he also is, like, incompatible with it, right? Regulus and Pandora both remark that Betrigu is unqualified to take in the Witch Factor in the box. With Regulus pointing out that it was not up to Betrigu, but that the thing had to decide that. So Witch Factor kind of, like, chooses you. Betrigu admits that he's not compatible and that he was holding on to what was entrusted to him. Exactly. Let's think about that for Subaru. He didn't even try to take the Witch Factor. He simply just ended Betrigus, and the Witch Factor just came into him. So I guess that's kind of him, like the Witch Factor choosing Subaru. And it's also interesting how the power, the proficiency of using the authorities, which comes from the Witch Factor, even though Betrigus is pretty good and strong, he's not compatible. But you look at Subaru, and he is compatible Yet, his powers of the authority suck. The witch cult is split between a moderate faction and a radical faction. Yeah, I, I think that was already hinted back in Season 2 Trials. It is made evidence that there is a moderate and radical faction of the witch cult, the former led by Petrigus. That's right, we're going on to the Elder Forest, helping out the, you know, the, the elves in the forest. Yet, there is a radical faction which probably is more like Regulus's people, right? Not as obvious in the light novel, but the implication is there. Regulus is the head of the rag, uh, radical faction of the Witch Cult. It is stated by one of Betrigus' fingers that Regulus is the head of the radical faction. Episode 19, let's go. Pandora had requested the spirits to lead Amelia towards the seal. Oh yeah, it was like the tiny little, you know, fairies. Remember, fairies were like a key word that hinted at bad spirits. It is revealed that the spirits that led to Amelia towards the seal were requested to do so by Pandora. Whether they were contracted to her or was not as unclear. Echidna knows and speaks a little about Amelia's mother. At the end of the trial, Echidna mentions knowing Amelia's mother, implying that she was pushy, complacent, hubristic, egotistic, and hypocritical. I think hypocritical here is very, very important because if we're going with Minerva is Amelia's mother theory, there is a scene when Minerva prevents Subaru from, you know, ending himself. But she also kind of like does something hypocritical immediately after. So obviously I'm walking backwards to, you know, trying to figure out does anything with Minerva make sense. But here is something that might make sense. And that she has sort of jealousy described as why is it always you by Echidna? Who does she have a jealousy for? And who is the you here? Talking to Echidna? I don't know, but uh, this is the mother's traits. Jealous. Like the Witch of Envy, and all these different things. Is it Minerva? I want to believe it's Minerva. Episode 22. Beyond Amelia, there are two other people that Echidna hates. Near the end of Amelia's second trial, there's another lengthier conversation between Echidna and Amelia, where the former mentioned that the other than Amelia, there are only two people in the world uh, with whom she interacts spitefully. Their identities are unknown. She also adds that her hatred for Amelia has nothing to do with their status as a half-elf, nor because of her lineage, blood, or nature. <laughs> so, like, it's not prejudice. Everyone else hates Amelia based on race, based on prejudice, the discrimination of being a half-elf due to Satala stuff. But Echidna is a different level of hater. Echidna doesn't care for these things. She just hates Amelia for Amelia. Um, okay. However, she hesitates for a moment, saying that it may not be strictly correct. Interesting. Anyways, Echidna fucking hates Amelia. Not because she's a half-elf, but maybe everything that Amelia represents. 
her character, her personality, I don't know. Who are the two other people that uh, she would really hate? Does she hate Amelia's mom? I don't think so, right? If we consider that Minerva could be, I don't think Echidna has ever really done that. But there's two other people Echidna despises other than Amelia. Okay. Oh yeah, probably Satala. You're right, 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 right. Satala, Satala, Witch of Envy. What if it's Satala and the Witch of Envy? Because like, you know, these two are separate entities due to the incompatible witch factors, right? It's like a split personality thing, so... I don't know. She hates Satala and the Witch of Envy, but if it's not, you know, allowed to categorize those two as two separate people, then one more. Subaru for rejecting her contract? Nah, it was all part of her plan to get rejected, right? Amelia had never looked at her own reflection for fear of her own looks. Oh yeah, we already know this one, right? It's all about like the reflection in the mirror representing her accepting herself and the funniest tweet from Nagatsuki Tape where he had to apologize on behalf of season one ending for ReZero because Amelia brushing her teeth, she could see herself in that day-to-day -day life, you know, ending compilation, which is so fucking sweaty that he had to even make an apology for that. Episode 23. Mady and Elsa mentions their boss. Oh yeah, remember, Mady? It's from a different faction of people. Elsa is actually from, you know, her employer is Roswell. Maybe though, on the other hand, there's something else going on that was never really fully explained. Throughout the battle at Roswell's mention, Maybe and Elsa talks about a mama who seems to be their boss. Mama. Okay. We got a potential MILF that's going to be entering the fray. Wonder if this person's from Gusteco. But mama. Okay. Okay. There is more to the third trial than shown in the anime. Oh, okay, okay. The third trial lines were, the for, most, uh, for the most part, compressed in comparison to the original ones in the web novel and the light novel, with the visuals for one scene being missing as well. You can find a web novel version of these lines, as well as an analysis, in the spreadsheet found here. Oh, boy. We got a fucking spreadsheet. I, I don't want to go through a fucking spread. Jesus Christ, you got the cute. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Je oh my God. Dude, stop. <laughs> the absolute state of ReZero. I'm not going to spend the time right now to read and differentiate of all the different things happening, but this spreadsheet exists. If, if you guys want it, you know, go to the Wits Cult translations, okay? Jesus Christ. One of the third lines, uh, third trial lines was exchanged uh, in the light novel and anime in comparison to the web novel. Instead of, you have bent your knees before irresistible despair and you have lost even your sword. Just what is it you still cling to? As translated by Yen Press, which is not to be really trusted, right? Although this person is likely referring to themselves and not a second person. Instead of, if I bend my knee and lose my sword, what is left for me? As translated by Crunchyroll in the anime subtitles, I don't trust either of them. In the web novel, the line was, There are feelings which should not be spoken. Does it satisfy you now that they have come to light? What a very obscure, weird thing. But if it has to do with the sword, if it has to do with the identity, you know, missing something if they don't have a sword. It sounds like Reinhardt or Yulia. Something about like being a knight or being like a hero and that's all they are. Amelia originally met Sekhmet after the third trial. Okay. Originally, the witch that Amelia would meet after the third trial was Sekhmet, not Minerva. But in the anime, we got Minerva and that scene with Minerva preventing Amelia from turning around and all the different things happening there really made me think that Minerva could be the mom. However, Sekhmet mentions knowing Amelia's mother. Saying that much like Amelia's mother, Amelia is not timid during critical moments. Incidentally, Sekhmet mentions Minerva by name as the one other witch Amelia could manage to converse with, but also that Minerva cannot show her face to Amelia. Is this just not the craziest amount of like hinting that Minerva is the mom here? Unless, this is just again, more masterful misdirection from Tape, which, you know, I, I, I could totally see that too. The name Minerva brings strong feelings, particularly one of nostalgia to Amelia. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it, bro! 
<laughs> mom, it's mom. Narration mentions that it is a name that could evoke thoughts of someone very close to me. <laughs> but like, the whole Alice Subaru shit, like, it's the same thing here, maybe. Are we being trolled? We're being trolled right now, right? Don't trust anything, guys. Don't trust anything. One of the old witches was a vampire like Elsa. Oh, what? Okay, okay. Upon deducing Elsa's identity as a vampire, Garf also remarks that the one of the old witches was like was likewise a vampire. How the fuck does Garfield know that? He reads a lot of books. Interesting. Uh old witches. Hector? Is Hector a vampire? Like if I think about like the old witches. Well, we also don't know the previous witches before like Daphne. Like, Tifone, and... Because, here's the interesting thing. A lot of the witches of the current generation that's sealed away, they're very young. Right? They're very, very young. Implying that they could have just, you know, taken over their new role. So, old witches, previous positions for, you know, like, pride, gluttony, uh... What else is there? Greed? A kid has been kind of holding it down, but she's also died at the age of 19. Right? So there's a lot of young women in those positions that you could have like an older generation of witches that could be the vampire here. Something protects Subaru from being consumed by the flames. Okay. After being rejected by Biaku and sent back to the entrance of the mansion. Again, this is, you know, episode 24. This is like the shit that's happening uh, where the mansion is burning down and Subaru is going back in. Remember. There was, you know, Zombie Elsa happening. There was also Guilty Low. Remember that shit? And how we kind of like overcame them with some sort of, uh, like, flower bomb explosion shit. I forget. Subaru rushes back into the mansion. He feels something wrong squirming inside him, yet not being able to focus on it because of the pain of the burns. The narration mentions that were, uh, mentions that were he able to witness what was happening. His body wrapped in a black, a mass of black miasma. Like a protective cloak of shadows. He would recall from how repulsive it was. Hmm. Ain't this... Satala shit? Is this Satala like helping us out here? In this critical moment? We were wrapped in a mass of black miasma to protect us from the flames. Sounds like Satala helping us out. Okay. Okay. Elsa died incinerated. Not crushed by the witch beast body guilty low. That's right. Elsa didn't just die with Smash Bin by, you know, by the Guilty Low, right? Sorry, not Guilty Low. By the Hippo uh, thrown by Garfield. She actually manages to regenerate and live on as a shadowy ghoul with nothing but murderous intent. She dies for real only after chasing Subaru into the escape corridor, right? The secret, you know, chamber that Subaru finally, you know, realized that the time that he died there, well, when it was really cold, it was like the last entrance to Biko. Opening the same door through which Subaru was teleported into the Forbidden Library, creating a backdraft, and this created the explosion, right? and being reduced to ashes by the subsequent, subsequent fire explosion. Episode 50. Mady speaks briefly about Elsa and their boss. Mady, having, after being captured, mentions that Elsa couldn't have survived the fire. Plus that if she returned, the kingpin named Mama was scolder. Okay. Well, I thought that like Roswell hired Elsa, but Mady was like from a separate thing. But maybe Elsa can still be from Mama. This interesting Mama title is very interesting. Is it like an assassin's guild? And there's like this kingpin named Mama? Okay. Okay. And we haven't seen Mady in a long time. Last thing we see of Mady is uh, Frederica saving her and taking her out. And she's just kind of like wrapped up tied in chains or some shit. Tied by ropes. By the like almost near the season finale, right? Or like the episode before it. And we don't really see her after that. I expect her to show up at some point. But like, okay. Mama is very important. Ud Lagna. One of the key mechanics of the world is theorized in universe. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean not really important? Od Lagna, one of the key mechanics of the world. Theorized in universe to bestowing divine protections and controlling people's use of magic. You're telling me this is not important? The fuck? This sounds like the fundamental law of Reaser Universe. Roswell explains to Subaru. What are the key mechanics of the world? Ud Lagna, a stockpile of mana at the core of the world. Oh. Huh. What's the core of the world though? Reaser world is flat. At the very middle center? 
But that's where all the nations are kind of bordering anyways. It's at the core of the world. And Rosal explains that people who tested different approaches and methods to the use of mana such that, that, such that would reach new heights of magic and rewrite the very practices history would witness Od Lagna. This is kind of like, um, what is it in, uh, Fate? The Root. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's an accurate comparison, because I don't fundamentally really understand the term Root, but it's a similar thing, right? The truth of magic, mana, everything is there. The Root, Old Lagna, a massive power much vaster than the mana they had manipulated before and get their mind broken. Rosal implies that his goal of resurrecting Echidna would normally result in the same thing, but he knows of a way to reunite Echidna without displeasing Old Lagna. It would displease. Hmm. He also mentions an in-world theory that Old Lagna is a consciousness ruling over everything in the world. It's like a greater being. Like this is the closest thing to God, and that is that it bestows divine protections upon people. Why does it keep choosing the Reinhardt family to do it? You know, the, you know, the Astrias. Roswell also mentioned that it would be likely that Subaru's manner of redoing things could potentially displease Old Lagna. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know if this will happen, but like, imagine everything that we've been doing has been fundamentally violating the nature's course that Old Lagna like maintains as this like big concept of just, just, I don't know, mana and just like higher being. And it's going to be like our biggest enemy. <laughs> Every time like we use our powers, it's like the karma meter building up for our punishment by this like god. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's scary. How the fuck is this not really important? This is crazy. Now we know about how divine protections are bestowed. And you know, like more about like implications of our powers, like Holy shit. Yeah. Elsa saying you are loved by the world to felt when, you know, the divine blessing of divine protection of uh the wind was shown. You are loved by the world. Old Lagna. Luck. It's it's just luck at the end of the day, but there is a greater being behind all of this force. Interesting. Okay. What does Lagna mean? Lagna, also known as Ascendant or Rising Sign, is a key concept in Vedic astrology that represents the first moment of a soul's contact with life on Earth. Oh, that's fancy. Uh, First moment of contact between the you know, soul and new life. Because like, oh, we know what that is. It's like the container, remember? It's like the container for the mana shit. If the gate is like a mana pouring out, right? Then the Ode is kind of like the container if that shit burst, right? You get like memory snow happening. Yeah, astrology also playing into a theme here, you know. Uh, what's his name? Nagatsuki Tape loves his, you know, uh, lore, deep with horoscopes and astrologies and shit. The Ryuzu Mayor crystal is gone in the final loop, which has some implications. Is this the Project Ultima? Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, not Ultima. Uh, Omega. Technically, this also happens in the light novel and the anime both, but given that the crystal disappearing is shown to the reader watcher is not framed as a mystery. In the web novel, however, the crystal's disappearance seems to hold some significance. When Subaru and Biko go to visit the crystal and or original reason mayor therein contain, they find a crystal gone, with the same bottomless hole from the second loop as its set. Oh, this bottomless hole keeps being mentioned in the cut content, right? I think Echidna's like, just like room of terrors, the bottomless pit. Super is left wondering about the culprit, deducing they have been waiting for the bear to be broken before using the passage of the hole providing a nabbing the crystals. This has to be Omega, right? The barrier waiting to be broken, this is all Echidna shit. It's, it's Project Omega, right? Beatrice has nearly no mana left. Yeah, we know about this. This is sad. Beatrice has no mana left. Super cannot provide her with a lot of it, meaning they're nearly powerless in battle. Womp womp. Another clever way of Nagatsuki Tape introducing powerful, you know, potential but it immediately gets nerfed. Yep, Biko was stockpiling all that mana for 400 years and now it's gone. The circumstances of Biko and Subaru's, Subaru's contract explained after the battle against the Great Rabbit are skipped over in the anime. It is confirmed that Subaru's gate is broken and for that reason their contract is necessary so Subaru does not die for being unable to expel mana. That's right. The gate is broken, the mana would just continue to build up and build up. We need a release. 
Furthermore, Subaru must be exclusively contract with Bieko. However, as a consequence of the fight against the Great Rabbit, Bieko has spent the mana she had passively amassed from the people inside the mansion over 400 years. And what Subaru is able to provide her is, uh, with is a merely a pittance. So, you can say goodbye to Al Minya. You can also uh, say goodbye to Al Shamak. I mean, we got EMM. We got the flight, right? We can fly. We got the gravity dark magic. And we can also, you know, iframe. But other than that, it's looking like it's it's a wrap. Yeah, we're, we're cooked. We're cooked. Roswell threatens Subaru. One second. Roswell threatens Subaru that if anyone Subaru chooses to protect dies, he will kill the rest. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yep, this is the straight bet thing, right? This is the implications of Subaru trying to make his cake and eat it too. Roswell will force a hard reset if he is unable to live up to his ideals. More of a clarification because of the faulty, you know, CR sub Crunchyroll classic. But in the final episode, what Roswell speaks to Subaru is a threat. If anyone that Subaru has resolved to protect dies, Roswell would kill the survivors and then would be killed by the curse he planted on himself due to the contract slash bet with Subaru. That's right, he will force a reset. Oh, sorry, I think I'm gonna hiccups now. <coughs> so like, maybe it's a good thing that Roswell is AFK right now and not in Pristella. Because I don't know, like, if we're able to save everybody, but, like, imagine Roswell just being a bigger hindrance than, you know, ally because of this fucking rule. Roswell hired Elsa, but not Mady. That's right. Very important here. Roswell elucidates. What a fancy word. What does that mean? <coughs> elucidate. Make something clear. Explain. I will elucidate. What a fancy word. Okay, I should add that to my repertoire. To Subaru that while yes, he did hire Elsa to target the mansion, Mady was not hired. Who hired Mady? God damn it, I got hiccups now. Implying that the event in Arc 2 was likewise not planned by Roswell. This means there was someone else who targeted the mansion in two separate times. Mama? Is, is this Mama? I don't know. At the banquet after the night ceremony, Subaru and Amelia talk about the trials and, <laughs> and her goal. I got the hiccups. The talk that was assumedly mentioned in the anime light novel and skipped over is believed to be this talk that happened on screen in the web novel. That's... Ugh. <laughs> I'm dying. There was, remember, let's have a talk, right? Uh, but that shit got skipped over. I thought it was going to be like bad news. In it, after, gra after grabbing the superhero clothes, it speaks about her past of having lived in Elior with her adopted mother, Fortuna, and other elves, of the witch's cult's assistance. And also the event that led to the force freezing over, triggered by Pandora. The Archbishop and the Black Serpent. All trial, you know, shit. However, all this narration and gives later events is un unclear just how much details Amelia gave to Subaru regarding the witch cult, Juice, and the Black Serpent. It is also mentioned that Puck is asleep inside a crystal because otherwise a crystal would not be able to contain him. And that one of a higher grade is necessary to wake Puck, uh, necessary to, for P Puck to wake up. That's right. That's why we went to, to Pristella. That's why we went to, you know, um, talk with Kiritaka and then Subaru fucked that negotiation up immediately. Moving on to Roswell's appearance, Amelia was lured by Roswell's proposal for Melt in the Forest. And despite the fact it was frozen over by her power, she cannot unfreeze it for being able to, unable to reach the same level of power from her mem memories. Child Amelia is stronger than an adult Amelia. And Roswell's proposal was to use the miracle performing blood of the dragon. We got the dragon blood now. Super is confused it. Okay, wait, wait. I mean, we have the blood of the dragon, right? Subaru is confused that it means killing the Dragon Volcanica, which would mean releasing Satala's seal. <gasps> oh, I didn't know that. I thought that, like, the seal was already made, and if you kill the Dragon Volcanica, nothing would change. I thought, if anything, killing Volcanica meant that, you know, releases Echidna's seal, but okay. Amelia corrects him that only one drop of blood is needed, <laughs> and that the blood of the dragon has been kept in the royal castle since the time the covenant was forged. This is yet another reason as to why Amelia feels her motivation is so... It is selfish, but like, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Dragon's blood. Do, do we know for a fact that like what Capella had was a divine dragon's blood? It's like right now we have that shit. 
and, and we only need one drop of the blood. Can we just cut our leg off and drip some fucking blood on these statues and see what happens? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. But Rosal basically groomed and scammed Amelia. Rosal had no fucking answer. He's like, oh, hypothetically, maybe you'd be able to do it. Do it. Hee <laughs> hee. Will you win this fucking, you know, thing for me? All right. The advent. An extra scene after the knighting. Here we go. There is a scene that should have been adapted after knighting ceremony in the final episode. Given how it will certainly influence later events in this st story, <laughs> it cannot be stressed just how important it is. You can find a translation in the webnow version here. Oh god, please don't be a fucking essay, bro. <laughs> please don't be a fucking essay. <sighs> Let's go! Footsteps echoed throughout the cold, dark... Oh, no, this is Omega! No, 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 we know this. This is uh, Project Omega. We've already covered this. Echidna even narrated all this shit. Yep, yep. This is uh, Project Omega shit. We know this one. We know this one. Here we go. Season 3. Cut content now. Ooh, okay, okay. Deeper ties between the Astria family drama and the royal kidnapping. Very important. When Subaru gives the exposition regarding the kidnapped royal family member who is most likely felt, Julius gives more of an insight into the dynamics of the Astria family, in particular that Reinhard was extremely attached to his father Heinkel as a kid. Beyond the normal father-son relationship. <laughs> Fuck. Hmm, okay. So this now adds even more context to why Reinhardt is so submissive to Heinkel. Reinhardt can't do anything against Heinkel. Not because of Heinkel owns the assets of Reinhardt's shit, but like the fact that there was already this relationship prior to that. Plus, he speculates that to prevent Reinhardt from turning against the kingdom, Heinkel has shown favor. And this is particularly important. Okay. Because Heinkel was suspected of being involved with the abduction of the royal fa family member 15 years ago. And remember, 15 years ago, this is the same time period when white whale subjugation was happening with, with Theresia von Austria. And people lament that the sword demon could not be there at the same time. Because the sword demon was away on du duty regarding this kidnapping event. And I mentioned back in Season 3 Episode 1 content that what if... Heinkel planned this shit in order to, you know, create a divide in order for him to monopolize the powers of the Astra estate. It's seeming more like it if he's directly involved. Now, he's suspected, right? Suspected, not confirmed. 15 years ago, making it so that he was suspected of the very action that led to his mother dying against the White Whale and the crux of Wilhelm's past regrets. Did Heinkel really do this shit? He really planned this shit out in order to gain the power because he's such a bitter person who doesn't have Von Austria? I don't know, but this is crazy. The witch's remains do not exist in the web novel. Oh. This is episode 5 cut content. <clears throat> Basically what it says in the tin. The witch's remains subplot, and therefore the Council of Ten Existence does not exist in the web novel version of the arc how <clears throat> whatsoever. Obviously, Kiritaka, a member of the said council, still exists. And instead, the witch cult demands 20 couples who are really in love with another to be delivered, claiming they would not be harmed. <laughs> Interesting. And remember, web novel stuff is... A lot of it is draft. It's the, Obviously, it's not getting carried in. So this shit, it's... Uh, <laughs> it got replaced with T-Phone's remains. But 20 couples who really love one another. Interesting. Okay. Episode 6. Big reveal regarding the artificial spirit's demands. Core 2 spoiler. Read only if plan to read a web novel. I'm scared. I'm scared. What do you mean? Core 2 spoil- So no, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't. I think we have to stop here. No, 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 we can't. We can't. No, 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 we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. This is like the attack- <laughs> The counter attack card that's gonna happen in February. And obviously the episode 8 stuff too. But uh, no, we're, we're not gonna- Nope, nope, nuh-uh. We're done. Done. Nope. Nope. That's it. We're cutting it off there. And that's pretty much it for the- Witch Cult Translations content. 
Um, obviously, there is you know, extra st stuff down here that maybe we could read later on, but uh, I think we'll be waiting. I think we'll wait for, you know, Core 2 to happen, then we'll revisit this and check out the Web Novel Cut content. I think a lot of the material here handed is just so condemning of, you know, Minerva being Amelia's mom. Still, I just truly believe that so much at this point. And Old Lagna, right? Oh, Old Lagna, I, I, I think the not really important part is actually one of the most important parts for me as it explain, explains like, you know, the origin of magic and divine protections and blessings and how Subaru is displeasing this greater entity. Anyways, see you next time.